Hello, Tim from Fairplay now on Friday 21st May 2021 and it's our last day on the Norfolk Broads. Here we are in the uh, this really nice little houseboat which comes with the dinghy that I showed yesterday. Although it's a little bit on the old side, it was it's spotlessly clean and really, really amazingly cheap with the use of the dinghy thrown in. I really can't complain, but going to be heading off in two or three hours time off back home, but via one of my uh, subscribers who's kindly invite us, invited us in for a cup of tea on the way back home, and uh, which is very kind of them. Looking forward to meeting some like-minded people and having a chat, uh, especially as we're going to be spending the weekend with uh, friends and family who uh, are very sort of pro-mainstream uh, narrative. So that'll be a sort of a nice little interlude to the journey back home. Yesterday I mentioned UK Column News and how I watched that. One thing I forgot to uh, say is they were talking about a, another whistleblower who was featured on James Dellingpole's uh, Dellingpod podcast. And so I checked that out last night. We sort of sat down and watched that. And his latest two podcasts are really well, well worth watching. Uh, the second to latest one features a guy called Don Wasman, who is a truther and also a kind of a security expert who acted as a bodyguard in places like Iraq and stuff. So, He's very interesting to watch. And as he was saying in his interview, his job entails doing reconnaissance, research, and you know, if he comes up against something that he doesn't like the look of, he'll obviously sort of take measures to avoid it and to protect himself and the people he was working for against it. So he's used those same skills uh, in the whole COVID situation, which he, as he explains, is why he feels and thinks like he does. So that's well worth checking out. But even better is James Denningpole's very latest podcast, which is an interview with the lady from the health service. Actually works in a surgery as a receptionist. And some of the things she was talks about in this podcast uh, with regard to adverse reactions is quite extraordinary. I mean, she was saying that in her particular surgery, they're getting so many adverse reactions, including a lot of deaths. And out of all of these events, only one has been reported to the yellow card system that I've talked about before already over a thousand deaths just here in the UK alone and if you sort of take that that's the official figure but as this lady saying in this interview out of all these events they've had literally only one has been reported to this yellow card thing and that's only because the person's relatives were extremely insistent on it Otherwise, there, there would have been no reports. So if this is the same up and down the country, hardly anything's getting reported. And yet the official figures are still giving a thousand deaths. I mean, how many more, like, you know, we're talking tip of the iceberg stuff there. How many more is it in reality? So highly worth looking at. So it's James Denning Poles, latest podcast with the uh, Dr. Surgery receptionist. And you can find that on dallianpole.podbean.com. I'll leave a link to that in the uh, comment section and the description box below. The next thing I looked at was the FLCCC weekly update for this week. And towards the end of the program during the sort of question and answer se section Dr Corey actually does mention the fact that ivermectin 
has been found to be effective for people suffering from uh, adverse reactions from the big V. So I found that really, really interesting. Uh, and it could be a course of action to take if anyone is having these adverse reactions. So really, really interesting. And even more interesting, during the first 10 minutes it is probably the best uh, section to watch. So if you've got limited time, at least watch the first 10 minutes of the FLCC's uh, latest update because Dr. Corey, first of all, he goes into some more uh, research papers which are showing that uh, Ivor has got really, really good results on uh, sort of dropping mortality rates from the virus. So he talks about that first of all. And then he talks about the, yeah, the really good things happening in Mexico. Spends a few minutes talking about that. And then he does talk about, as I was hoping he would, talks about India. And he does mention Goa and how they're getting great results there already. He's, he shows a few graphs which shows how well Goa's doing. And he also shows you know, uh, Uttar Pradesh and also Delhi's figures. Uh, Delhi number of cases uh, has dropped by 78% in just the last few days. Compare that with another pro province called Tamil Nadu. Now they've just had a new leader installed who doesn't like Ivor and has actually sort of banned its use for the treatment of uh, COVID. And unlike these other areas in uh, India where they're seeing cases deaths and everything dropping this particular region cases uh, number of cases has actually tripled in the last uh, few days and weeks so yeah that is very telling but i'll let you watch you know flccc's latest episode where dr corey explains it a lot better than i can but that's yeah the, the crux of what he's saying and really he's talking about india so around about eight to ten minutes into this episode. The rest of the episode, he is interviewing a guy called Steve Kirsch, who talks about not just ivermectin, but this other drug as well, um, very similar to uh, Iver, where it's been kind of found to be highly effective against the virus, and it's a cheap, very effective, and very safe drug and it's called flu fluvoxamine which is actually an antidepressant and the reason why they found that to be effective is obviously it's used as an antidepressant in mental health facilities and they were finding that uh, the doctors and nurses in these facilities uh, were getting sick from COVID but not the patients and after a bit of Kind of looking into things and research they came to the conclusion that it is because uh, uh, the patients were on this uh, this fluvoxamine drug so makes very very interesting viewing indeed and i can highly recommend watching the uh, latest flccc's update all the way through but if you haven't got the time for that at least watch the first 10 12 minutes where they're kind of updating on the India and Goa situation. So just a couple of things to round off this particular episode of mine. Um, I don't know if you've seen this uh, yet. It's a little paper called The Light and it can be found at thelightpaper.co.uk and it's only a few issues old. This is issue nine, which is this month's and you can sort of look at this copy and the back issues as well on that website I've just mentioned. Again, I'll leave a link to the site in, below as well. And you can see online versions of this on their website uh, and the back copies as well. Um, I actually managed to pick up a hard copy like this on the latest March I went on. 
and yeah some very very interesting articles in here uh they're sort of saying that's uh, the main headline with some really interesting graphs here uh kind of a bit saying the 2020 death rate isn't really that much more than previous years and if you sort of go back to about sort of 2009 2008 it's only as you know the amount of deaths last year in 2020 was only about as much as in 2009 and then we've got uh, this is the rates of flu so the last few years and then we get to 2020 where it just disappears and there's another couple of interesting graphs there that one shows um, you know, sort of hospital bed occupancy which is markedly lower uh, rather than higher and finally this one here which shows that this is the various diseases basically that people die from worldwide and right at the top here you've got uh, TB which goes all the way out there and then sort of C19 is just right here just one of these really tiny ones so yeah that's a very interesting article and then we've got uh, we come into here and page two i'll let you read that rather than reading it out but you can uh, check that out very interesting reading and page three is found this a very interesting article as well 10 steps to mass mind control and it's almost like an a to z of ways in which you can get a population to think along the lines that you want them to think and it makes pretty scary reading and it explains a lot of what's been going on over the last year and if you can't read the whole article they sort of kindly put a, a little kind of summary of the points on, on how this has been done in this little column here so highly recommend the light newspaper that can be as i say that can be found at the lightpaper.co.uk i'll leave a link to it below and finally i re I, although i'd heard of this a few weeks ago i've only really kind of checked out their site in the last couple of days and it's called the, the white rose or one word dot uk i'll leave a link to that uh, as well below and they describe themselves as a peaceful resistance site and basically they drew their inspiration from the uh, uh shoal brother and sister team who uh, uh, were kind of the German part of the German resistance in Nazi Germany, um, who sadly were uh, arrested and executed by the Gestapo for uh, just distributing sort of anti-Nazi leaflets around. Highly inspirational, you know, well worth sort of finding some documentaries on them and watching them. Uh, but yeah, this white rose, the white rose uk, is taking inspiration from them and operating in a, a similar vein by coming out with information and creating a support community for people like us so well worth checking that out as well and as i find out more about them i'll probably be talking about the more in future uh, episodes of this is here as well so i'll leave it there be back uh, at some point over the weekend with more news and views, I should think. Tim from Fair Play now. Thanks for watching.